Ciao. All right. What is up, fam? It is Shar, and welcome to Law Living Color, where I provide quick tips and experiences on the law school process and legal field as a person of color. Off the top today, we have some law school news that hit major media outlets. I'm talking CNN and Washington Post on Yale Law. So the word on the street, on the blogs, and in media, of course, is that a 2L law student that is part of two groups, uh, the Federalist Society and the Native American Law Student Association, sent out an invitation to the Native American Law School Association. From here on, I'm going to just call it NALSA or NALSA, whatever sounds better, um, in partnership with FedSoc. And the invitation actually struck a nerve with a lot of people. It was very triggering for some people and it went so far as to cause a pretty much a big, a pretty big ordeal at Yale in which people were expecting a response from the student. And then Yale got involved and then it's just the, you know, bowl of mixed up jumbo. So I wanted to just pretty much give you all the news and then I also wanted to give my input um, and hopefully in the future I do an interview with someone and we can rehash this and talk more about it because it actually is intriguing in the sense of where the argument and where things can shift. So it all started with an invitation. Sup, Nausa. Hope you're all still feeling social. This Friday at 7.30, we will be christening our very own, soon to be, world-renowned NAUSA Trap House by throwing a Constitution Day bash in collaboration with FedSoc. Planned attractions include Popeye's chicken, basic bitch American themed snacks like apple pie, etc. excuse my French, a cocktail station, assorted hard and soft beverages, and most importantly, the opportunity to attend the NAUSA Trap House House's inaugural mixer. Hope to see you all there. Some people that are part of NALSA felt the need to screenshot it. I mean, maybe because they were offended by the words or just, it just seemed off. So they screenshot it and pretty much it circulated throughout campus, including in the hands of president of Black Law Student Association. And she said, I guess celebrating whiteness wasn't enough. Y'all had to upgrade to cosplay slash blackface. She also quoted that the Federalist Society has a historically is is historic has historically supported anti-black rhetoric. Sorry guys, I can't speak today. Woo! Ciao. All right. I will say what I understand to have been the triggering words in the invitation. So the two things were uh, Trap House and Popeye's chicken. So Trap House, if you don't know, is you know, a place where drugs are sold, essentially. Um, they are predominantly in poverty-stricken areas, um, which also happen to be predominantly black areas. Um, and so then it's accompanied with the whole Popeye's chicken. But those are the two things that have caused offense. So what Yale decides to do is Yale decides to call the, the student in, pretty much say, hey, you know, you should apologize. The student was being accused of um, harassment by a few students, um, which I think was pretty strong, but was accused of harassment and everything. And the law student, the 2L student who made the invitation pretty much was like, you know, I wasn't harassing anyone essentially. So what I need to apologize for. There was a second meeting in which he actually ended up recording. I don't know where the recording is. If y'all know where it is, please link it to me, send it to me so I can watch it. But um, he recorded the meeting and essentially what some of, I guess, what is understood has, you know, he was talking to the dean or someone um, high up at Yale and they were insinuating, they were like, you know, this would be really bad for you if this came out on your character of fitness for the bar exam. Now, a little backstory behind that. Um, if you are applying to law school, you know that they ask you character and fitness questions and you know, when you actually, there's a reason for that. When you actually go to prepare for the bar, they have a character and fitness in which anybody can submit any character and fitness concerns when you're about to take the bar, including your law school. So if you were to do anything before 
or during your law school um, career. Um, your law school can report that formally to the bar and you know it could affect your eligibility to even take the bar um, and get licensed as an attorney. So it's a pretty big deal. So for Yale to pull that out of its pocket and pretty much say, hey, you know, pretty much insinuating that they would, I guess, tell the bar that this doesn't look good for him um, and it would hurt his character and fitness, that got some backlash. Um, so Yale made a statement soon after that, and here's what Yale had to say. Yale University and Yale Law School have strong free speech protections, and no student is investigated or sanctioned for protected speech. When the law school receives complaints about offensive communications, the dean of students routinely tries to help students talk to one another and resolve their disagreements within the community. At no time was any disciplinary investigation launched or any disciplinary action taken in this matter. While any person may report concerns about a lawyer's character and fitness to the bar, the law school has a long-standing policy of reporting only formal disciplinary action to the Bar Association. Any media reporting to the contrary is false. The tea gets a little hotter here in that it's kind of like, oh, we didn't say that. We don't know what he's talking about. And if the media is pushing what he's saying, then they're wrong. So <laughs> I guess Yale Law School claims fake news in this regard. So here's my input on all the facts I just gave y'all. Um, the student does actually talk about the Popeyes and the um, trap house comment. Let's see what he has to say. Invitation, and I'll put it back up on the screen. The reference to trap house, the reference to Popeyes. Explain each of those to me. Sure. So for me, trap house, it just means party house. It's some of the Urban Dictionary things say it's where high school students drink together in a mother's basement. That's the impression that I kind of had on it. It's kind of like a frat house, but without a fraternity. I'm on a lot of student groups. I throw, I intended to throw a lot of parties. So that's just kind of what I was calling my house. I didn't see it as a racial thing. I saw more as a bachelor pad that would have parties. And for Popeye's chicken, that wasn't even my decision. I didn't pick the catering. The catering was picked by other people because- Um, so, mm. Here's, here's what here's what I have to say, y'all. Here's what I have to say. Do I think the invitation was offensive? I could see how it was. I probably would have read the invitation and been like, man, that sounded kind of crazy. I don't know if I would have like went further than that comment, but I understand why some people would have been offended. I guess, you know, to, to me, it exuded ignorance. I don't know if it exuded maliciousness. So to say that he was harassing people, I feel like, and let me get into my future lawyer brain here. I feel like he would have to show intent and like an intent to be malicious. Like he was purposely trying to. Do I think that he should apologize? Yes. If, if I offended someone, so like, I can offend someone unknowingly. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm harassing them because I feel like harassment is a knowingly kind of thing. And so I do think he offended people. I like he did. I don't think he did. He did. He offended people and he should apologize for offending people. He should say, sorry, you know, I was ignorant on this terminology or how I used my words in this invitation. I apologize for that and I will strive to do better in the future. I think that he should have genuinely said that. As in regards to harassing people, I don't think he harassed anyone, so does he have to apologize for that? No. So do I believe him? Not really. I just feel like he doesn't want to apologize for something because he feels like he didn't do anything wrong. People have to understand that if you offend someone, just because you deem it not offensive doesn't mean that person doesn't deem it offensive. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm offended by something you say, you can't discredit me and gaslight me essentially and say, oh, you shouldn't be offended by that because you think I shouldn't be offended by that. No, that's not how it works. And we all know that's not how it works. Now on to the topic of Yale. Do I think Yale handled this correctly? I don't agree with how Yale handled him, okay? Um, the situation in which releasing a statement pretty much saying, you know, our hands are tied. Look, I get that. A lot of the time, school's hands are tied. Now, if anything was to incite a riot or, you know, have horrible hate speech, that's one thing. But we have to understand that freedom of speech is protected. And as entities, we can't necessarily punish someone for saying something or saying how they feel. Taking the student aside and kind of like, to me, threatening him to apologize, that was wrong. So Yale, if you did that, come on, dude. Not cool, not cool. If the dude wants to be a butthead and not apologize, 
don't sit up there and threaten his professional life with it. I just don't think that sets a good precedent moving forward with anybody else. It's like, it can go both ways. So just because I said something that offended people and then I say something else that might uplift people, you can threaten me both ways. So don't take that as the precedent. So I hope you guys got all that. I hope you guys got the facts of it, the facts of the case in my opinion. Oh, look at me with the law school jargon. Um, so I hope you guys got that. Um, it was pretty intriguing to me. I wanted to relay it to y'all. If y'all haven't already seen it on the news, you probably have. If you haven't, that's what I'm here for, to report it to y'all. Um, and if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, please like, comment, and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. Typically with my off the top videos, I do not have a quote. So all I have to say is, Peace, guys.